All right. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone it is. Good day to you. My name is Damien Wolf. Welcome to my channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is on Stray Games. If this is on Facebook, then you're watching me in Wolf Stand. If you're watching on Twitch, it is Damien Wolf Howl. So, <laughs> once again, welcome to my channel. And today, we are going to be talking about uh, Splinterlands. And one of the strategies that I employ if you want to succeed in the Diamond uh, Champion League, uh, I think would be helpful. Alright, so... This technique or strategy is actually what I call the Immortal Kraken Technique. Alright, so obviously there's going to be a monster there that you're going to be very much familiar with, but let's get to that later. Let's take a look at the rule sets that we're going to be uh, seeing this kind of play, uh, you know, effective on. So obviously this is a water splinter type of strategy, and uh, the rule sets will actually involve um, anything with opportunity, super sneak, um, sometimes equalizer, but uh, not really. But uh, to be honest, anything that has opportunity or super sneak, this would be uh, this would be a really, really good uh, technique to use on, right? So let's get to the cards. First off, let's go to the summoners. Alright, we're going to take a look at the market here. I'm just going to show some of the cards that we normally employ for this kind of strategy. Um, for summoners, we will go with, of course, this is a water, uh, <laughs> water splinter strategy. So, I'll be honest, any summoner will actually do. Alright, any of the summoners here, as long as you have the mana cap, will do. But, you know, particularly, um, it is most effective using Valnamore. Because Valnamore does add one speed and one additional health to um, to all the monsters, including of course Kraken. Now, depending on the situation, for example, if you think you're going to be going up against a Yodin user, then maybe you can use Lear Deep, Deep Swimmer. Um, if you are a little bit short of mana, then you can use any of the other uh, remaining uh, summoners which have lower mana cost, right? Like Vera, Bortis. C Chan, Alric, uh, well, of course, Alric. All right. Now for the monsters. Obviously, the one important monster, very OP, is well, well, <laughs> what I would call releasing this guy. <laughs> this is the Kraken. All right. So the Kraken. Of course, we're going to talk about the max level Kraken because this is a diamond champion strategy. Um, the most important, the most important skill ability that this uh, creature has is actually taunt. That and the fact that it has actually four shield and fourteen health. Oh yeah, forget the fact that it has twelve mana, but <laughs> it needs to have a little bit of a downside, all right? And aside from Taunt, it actually has three other great skills. That is Demoralize, which lowers uh, melee attack. We have Enrage, which increases melee attack and speed when it's damaged. And we also have Retaliate. So when it's hit by a melee attack, um, he has a chance of attacking the attacker. All these skills combined make Kraken a real powerhouse to deal with. Very hard to kill. Um, and even attempting to kill him because of uh, enrage and because of retaliate w may result to your downfall instead. <laughs> All right, so Kraken uh, is going to be the, uh, of course, the most important part. This strategy is named Immortal Kraken, so obviously we need Kraken. All right, what are the other cards? So for secondary um, monster. I'll just go to the essentials first, okay? And then I'll put in the optional monsters later. The second and third, I guess, most important monsters that to use would be... Okay, we're gonna still going to be in Water Splinter. The, it would be the healers. Okay, let's go to Marketplace again. Here we go. And that would be... Where are you? We're looking for... Medali Guardian, that's one. 
So Merdali Guardian has these skills at max level. First of all, um, Merdali Guardian is a 3 mana monster. Tank heal, 4 speed, 4 health, repair, and adds an additional life, um, life with strengthen. So obviously with uh, with Kraken already having high life, um, any more life added to it, you know, will will just increase its mass and and the uh, you know the challenge to kill it actually. So this obviously helps. The other card that we'll need is I think it's a common card, and that is was it a common card or was it a rare card too? Definitely not an epic card. Okay, because I'm back here in the cards. Let's go back to the marketplace. It should be here. Here we go. The card is called Crustacean King. So Crustacean King is uh, definitely a common card, also with three mana. Um, one speed, one health, two... Uh, sorry, one shield, two health for level one. But on level 10, he actually gains an attack to attack, but that's not really you know what we're <laughs> crazy about. The important thing here is that for 3 mana, he has tank, heal, and also protect. So he adds healing and a defensive, you know, a defensive ability for all your monsters. And only for 3 mana. It is pretty cool. A little bit something like uh, Truth Speaker for life, but he actually has an attack. So, you know, you can, you know, in a pinch, you may be able to, to win you a game or two. Alright, so we already have Merdali Guardian and Crustacean King. And the thing is, guys, they actually complement each other. Right? I mean, take a look at what happens here. So for Crustacean King, he has Protect. And for Merdali Guardian... Merdali Guardian instead. Okay, like going back to the marketplace. Why does it keep going there? Okay. Merdali Guardian, meanwhile, has repair. So the Crustacean King will add the sh the, pr the shield, and Merdali Guardian will repair it, right? But Kraken already has its own shield, right? So. Anyway, both will be very useless, especially for your support group. Kraken is not the only monster that you'll be having on your team. Alright? <laughs> so definitely for Immortal Kraken, you will need healers and support crew. So we already have Merdali Guardian and Crustacean King as support. Now, what is the, the uh, I guess, the fourth most important card? That card is a legendary. And it is one of the few water cards. One of the few water cards which has blast. And that is Lord of the Seas. So Lord of the Seas ha is a six mana monster. Four power, four magic power, three speed, and five health. The most important ability, of course, is blast. So he will be attacking with four power and deal a reduced amount on the monster behind the monster he attacked. Alright? Or, well, around it. <laughs> for AoE splash damage. Now, he also has other abilities at the max level. He has Swiftness, which adds speed to all of your monsters. And he also has Silence. So, if you're facing, facing a mirror, mirror match, then uh, or somebody using uh, magic, then Silence will, of course, will reduce the, the attack of all magic monsters. Very, very nifty skills all around. So we already have your tank, we already have your support, we already have your DPS. So that's actually four cards. Now, there's still remaining two cards. And for the remaining two cards, um, you can actually input whatever else you want. It can either be another support monster or more DPS. But what is most common is that people will normally use something like this. They will normally use Prismatic Energy. At max level, Prismatic Energy has 3 power, 5 speed, and 11 health. He has Magic Reflect and Void. So if you're dealing with magic, then he's the perfect uh, monster to put in, usually behind Kraken. 
so that if the uh, enemy enemy is using anything with blast, for example, the enemy also has his own Lord of the Seas, and uh, it hits Kraken, the remaining splash damage will uh, will hit Prismatic Energy, and he will reflect that damage to the enemy Lord of the Seas, right? So another card that you can use instead of Prismatic Energy is actually this guy, Budget Oceanus. <laughs> he is a legendary monster with eight uh, mana cap, mana cost, sorry, eight mana cost, three power, five speed, 11 health. He has some very annoying skills like Void, Face, and Force Field. This is very OP because especially if you put him on the secondary position, Oceanus can actually act as a secondary tank. And if you have, uh, if you are, uh... all right. So let's get back to the other monsters that we can use. So let's try this. Let's go to the other last monster, the other slot. Now for the for the remaining slot, we can choose. One more monster, which I think is was very helpful when I normally you uh, do Immortal Kraken, and that monster is where are you? There, here you go, River Helendale. I mean, since the name is Immortal, why not put in a monster that actually resurrects your Kraken, right? So River Helendale. Adds, has the resurrection ability. Um, he resurrects uh, the first monster that dies um, and resurrects it with one health. Now, it can only trigger once per battle, but he also has some other skills. He has Inspire, which gives all friendly monsters plus one melee attack, so your Kraken will have a higher attack. And he also has Dispel. When the monster hits an enemy, it clears all positive status effects on that enemy. Right, so definitely helps you out in the long run. And remember, if you're going to be using Valnamor or Alric or any magic uh, type of uh, deck, then his, he, he can also be part of the, the damage of the offense. <laughs> All right, so we already have some of the cards. Uh, aside from River Helen Dale, actually any type of magic card um, is usable or non-magic card. It really is up to you. But I find the monster that I provided earlier, Prismatic Energy... Um, Oceanus and River Helendale as the ones which provide me more the most success Well, let's get to some examples then Let's do it. All right first example We are going to be up against life. This is a 56 uh, Mana and uh, all no no, I guess no rule set and uh, the splinters available are fire water life and death our opponent used life and normally this would not be good for magic because we actually have an almo combo in front and this almo will reflect all our magic damage back right the thing is he also tried to use some backdoor which is silver shield assassin and sandworm and that's where our immortal kraken actually shines because this time these bad boys would have to deal with this bad boy right and they would have to get through him, but with 4 shield already, 14 health, with protect and healing from these two, it that is going to be a challenge. Well, let's see what happens. Alright, all the buffs are applied. Here we go, the shields are up. Obviously, our uh, offense is uh, trying to uh, kill that Almocambio up in front. Kraken is now at 8 power and he is he is now hard to hit. Okay, because of Frenzy. Kills off that Almo Cambio pretty quickly. Knocks off that Silver Shield Assassin. Sandworm is up, but Sandworm will not be able to get to retaliate. <laughs> Retaliating uh, actually killed him. And now the support monsters from the uh, from the back. Our easy pickings for this crew. Kraken hitting with 8 power there. Cornelius will not go down easy, but it will go down. He cannot withstand this much damage. And there we go. Alright, let's look at another example. 
on the next example we are up against dragon earth very formidable here all right but as i mentioned we have some uh we have some uh some monsters that can help us out so first of all for this iteration we have oceanus on the second position instead of prismatic energy the reason is because the rule set that we have here is no neutrals so instead of having prismatic energy we have Oceanus here in the second position, which will act like our off tank just in case Kraken dies. But remember, this this technique, <laughs> this strategy is not called Immortal Kraken for nothing, right? All right. So besides Oceanus, we already have our two support monsters. We have River Hellendale and our main offense, Ruler of the Seas. Our opponent is using Dragon Earth, using a back taunt combo with my Celix Slip Spawn at the back. Having his Desert Dragon attacking freely from the front, which is supposedly pretty good. It's a pretty good strategy, but let's see how our team fares against this. Here we go. So some firepower is uh, is going to be up for grabs here by, uh, by our team. There we go. Kraken actually dies here, but he gets resurrected by River Hellendale and gets healed pretty quickly by Crustacean King. So very, very bad. Our Kraken has already died. But here comes Oceanus acting as a secondary tank here. And now without the uh, now without the Mycelic Zip Spawn, we can kill off the Desert Dragon. And everything else is actually very easy to deal with with magic. River Hellendale and Lord of the Seas killing off his remaining monsters quite easily with uh, Oceanus holding the fort in tank position there. Alright, so I know I said this is Immortal Kraken, but that is an example of our Kraken actually dying, but still we are able to win. Let's go to the next. The next example has us actually dealing with a deck which almost countered us all the way. First of all, this is a 40 mana cap equalizer and uh, all monsters have the snipe ability but the snipe would m not mean anything because again we have Kraken and they're forced uh, to attack Kraken because of our taunt ability. Now this lineup actually almost has us countered because he has back Jira in front, a very very tough tank to deal with which has his own, um, you know, he has his own uh, regen. And also has void, so our our magic attackers are not able to just you know scratch the surface here with back Jira. Plus he's using Bortus, so this actually reduces our magic damage even more. So can we deal with this? Let's see what happens. <laughs> At this point though, I don't have River Hellendale. Instead, I put in Mermaid Healer. Um, uh, this is for strategic purposes with triage and. Um, What's this? This strengthen. There you go. It's strengthen, right? Yeah, strengthen. <laughs> and we have cleanse just in case um, Kraken gets poisoned or there's affliction. We can uh, take it out with cleanse right away. Let's see if we can cut through the defense here. Obviously, going to be very hard to deal with. Kraken needs to be the one majorly attacking here. He actually has a sandworm. But the Sandworm cannot get through because he has to attack Kraken due to Taunt. Because of the Equalizer rule, our rule uh, most of our monsters have around 19 health. But, you know, he, he doesn't... Um, he actually has a high health, high health as well. Since we have Prismatic Energy on the second position, Lord of the Sea's Blast ability is actually redirected back to him. Now... He cannot snipe us because of taunt, but we can snipe him. So that's why his uh, gentle giant is actually dying right now. It's being sniped. Right now, our monsters are attacking the Lord of the Seas. And, Lo and our Kraken is still holding fort here, absorbing all the damage, getting healed by our two healers, and getting a shield repaired by Merdali Guardian. Now all that needs to be done is to get through the backline monsters and uh, most of our offense is uh, doing its best to get through that. Okay, it's gonna take a while though because um, again, back Jira very hard to deal with 
and everybody has higher life. Almost done here. Our team just sweeping up. Just need to get rid of that pesky uh, sandworm. Because it, you know, he still hits hard, right? He still hits hard. Oh my god, that is a massive retaliate there from Kraken. Okay, Zenith Monk is up, but uh, he has reflect damage. But that is just too much damage to be, you know, attempting to deflect. Meanwhile, Kraken retaliating all of the melee monsters. That's the thing with Immortal Kraken technique. Normally, it deals with almost everything that our opponent can, uh, can throw at you. Maybe the most, uh, probably... The best technique to deal against with is range, but even with range, it's gonna have a hard time dealing with that Kraken. All right, for our next example, we have Prismatic Energy on the second position here, but this time we have Dwarven Wizard here on our, um, I guess, uh, fifth position with Snipe and Stun and also a Magic user, so uh, Balnamore buffs this guy. We got 40 Mana Cap and op um, Opportunity rule set. Now, you're noticing a pattern here. Um, whenever there is anything which deals with Taunt or Snipe or Opportunity, I normally put in, and if I'm using Water, I will normally use this. So that will all automatically negate any of the rule sets for our enemy. Meanwhile, we have opportunity. Okay, so our, anim our enemy is using uh, water as well, but he went with a Kelia, uh, double regenerating monsters. He also have a Lord of the Seas. Um, he has Amplify here, probably to amplify the Torns, built by Hydra. And we have Poseidon with blast damage and uh, shield here at the back. Pirate Archer also has blast. So let's see. What happens? It's very blasty. Uh, it's gonna be a very blasty battle. Now, Crustacean King helps here because he actually has. Um, he provides everybody with shield, so that kind of negates some of the blast damage of the other monsters. Of course, Ruler of the Seas has magic damage, so we really can't uh, can't block that with a shield unless it's a void shield. Meanwhile, our offense is killing off some of the monsters we have here. Our monsters are not affected by well. They are affected by the uh, opportunity rule set, so they're going to be attacking um, uh, elsewhere. Meanwhile, our enemy has no choice but to attack our ta taunt monster. And so far, our Kraken is still alive after even absorbing all of that, getting torn out. But this time, we have just have an Hydra remaining, and that's not going to be a challenge at all for this team. Cool. All right, let's go to the next example. So for the next example, we are going to be going up against Dragon this time. And we have, again, uh, Oceanus here on the second position. And we have River Helendale um, here this time near Lord of the Seas. Now, this is going to be very challenging because, first of all, our, our, uh, our enemy is using Wave Brood, which also has Taunt. So normally that is done so that the first monster would be dealing heavy damage. But Robo Dragon Knight is not exactly the most offensive monster here. I mean compared to other examples of dragon we have. But anyway, I guess he was preparing so that if Wave Brew dies, he has RDK which has Reflect and Return Fire um, uh, to deal damage. Okay, but let's see if his uh, strategy pulls off. A win here. Um, there we go. All the buffs are, are set in. Wave Brood is being hit now by all of our the offense. Um, Lord of the Sea is actually providing that blast damage to this monster here. To Angelic Mandarin. Alright. So... Our Kraken is not making a lot of, uh, le uh, I guess, a lot of headway with RDK. So it's best that we really clear out this Wave Brood at the back as quickly as possible. So that we can, our, our backline monsters can help with attacking that RDK. Meanwhile though, even though there's lots of sustain, our Lord of the Seas is providing splash damage to the monsters 
uh, beside Wave Brood. And Kraken actually retaliates if there is a melee attacker that uh, that attacks him. Like like that. <laughs> so Kraken is almost dead, but he gets back to life because of regen, regeneration, and the shield. Gets back up to 9 again. And he retaliates and kills off that Deep Lurker. He's almost dead, but he gets <laughs> regen back up. Retaliating again to kill off that Carnage Titan and dealing with this Void Dragon. And there we go. Alright, for our last example, in an almost impossible situation, we actually use Kraken in a low mana situation. Right? We don't have Valnamor, we don't have Lord of the Seas, we don't have a lot of um, um, pretty strong damaging creatures. But we we are, you know, we do have Kraken, and we have one support crew with Merdali Guardian and one DPS with Dwarven Wizard. Let's look at the rule set. Mana cap is twenty. Twenty. So I used C Chan, which is the two mana summoner, so that I can, um, you know, I can put in uh, Kraken and some support crew. Now I took the chance because it is a heavy hitters rule. This is why I actually added Dwarven Wizard, which stuns our enemy. So this is this looks looks like stretching it a little bit just so we can include Kraken. But you know, let's see what happens. <laughs> our opponent is actually using Vigilator, which is a strong uh, strong card here. We get poisoned, the Kraken gets poisoned off the bat. But he's also doing some retaliates. Um, we are not hitting the the opponent though. He gets healed by Medali Guardian. Poison rule is applied, but because our Kraken is not getting uh... <laughs> right, okay, so our Kraken is still not dying here. It's not getting any lethal damage despite being poisoned. So these two tiny me, tiny teeny weeny monsters will not be able to stop this Kraken. And there you go, getting it for the win. All right, so that is up for our examples. Once again, this is uh, the Immortal Kraken uh, technique, normally being used in water uh, water splinter for for, uh, for water focus. So if you like this content, guys, again, please click on the subscribe button. Um, put in, of course, also toggle the notification bell so you uh, a button so that you're notified of any new releases, new videos that I come up with. Alright, I hope this video helps you out and please, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Um, of course, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you again for watching this video, guys. I'll be seeing you on the battlefield. Bye-bye.